Hi everyone, my name is Alfala Adiyansola and I'm the founder and executive chef of Purple Bistro. And um, I've been doing this professionally for about five years and it's been a very rough journey. But I'd like to show you how I started. <laughs> I think it started in 2013. I mean, one of my guys had an event and he needed extra help. So I volunteered to go with him, not because of money or anything. I just needed to like, <clears throat> you know, help him out. And I've always had a thing for food because I'm the first child. I'm the one that basically has to help my mom in the kitchen and everything. So, so it started, I was this regular guy that just makes, um, popcorn and ice cream. So from there I developed a whole lot of interest in cooking. So I started getting very close to chefs and um, I had to build my career while I was still in school. Basically it was me starting as a kitchen assistant, literally. In 2018 I made up my mind that I needed to own a restaurant because 60 or 70 percent of every chef out there they will actually want to have their own restaurant or business it might not even be a restaurant but mine was basically to own a restaurant and I had the idea I had the plan but there was no money <laughs> basically so you know I had to start looking for funds it was crazy I wanted to I bought the old project, but then I had someone that was literally encouraging me that, oh, there you can do this, oh, you have the experience, and um, I've, I have like, I've cooked for a whole lot of people. I went to schools, Babcock, um, I did more of Babcock University, um, Unilag, Caleb, Bell's University. So I was literally very deep into like field events and. People got to like, people got familiar with my food. I tried to raise funds. First thing was to secure the space. Actually, if you want to do a business, the first thing is to get a space. I was able to get a space. I spoke to someone I used to work with before. So I was able to get a space. Then I started outsourcing for money, which was very crazy because that delayed the project for like about four months and rent was just reading. But then when I got the money, I was able to put major things in place. You know, I had the idea and everything. So I was able to bring it to life. And even when the place was ready to open, I still did not open because I was scared of failing. And um, I just had to pray about it. And I took a step of faith. <laughs> So yeah, I was able to start Purple Bistro. I started understanding that um, I needed to do this and make money too. So I met a friend, he was the major person that made me understand food business. Because there's the food industry and there's the food business. So I already understood the food, food industry. So it was the one that really pushed me to, into food business. I understand how to, you know, manage costs, how to put pricing, basically everything. So that was like one major person that played a very huge role in my life. So, and we worked together for like two years. Trust me, it was crazy. We go for jobs, we don't make money. We are there over the night. I studied accounting and I was very, very bright. <laughs> I'm, I'm still bright actually. <laughs> I was very good, but I knew that this wasn't what I wanted to do. So I had to make that sacrifice. I had to look for a way to balance school and work. So I told you I studied as a kitchen assistant. And when I meant that, I mean literally 
the one that would do the dishes in the kitchen, the one that would clean the restaurants, the one that would mop, the person that has to live last. I do the dirty jobs, I go to the market. So I really like started from the grassroots of, and I think doing that while I was in school was, and was great for me because most of my peers right now, it was after school. After that year, they had to figure out what they wanted to do with their life. But while I was in school, I was able to figure out what I wanted to do. So I was able to cover that one year space while I was still in school. And it was really crazy because I have to go to work during the day. I have to come back to school to read over the night because I have exams, I have tests. So, I mean, I don't even know how I did it, <laughs> right? I'm thinking about it right now. It's very crazy because I don't know how I did it. So it was like, I did not know what I wanted to do when I first started school. I mean, just basic, me basically being a normal student, no work. I gotta call my parents if I need money. So then I started growing interest in cooking. So I needed to balance both of them. So when I realized that I wanted to do this, basically, I had to prioritize. Not like I was choosing the chef life over school, but I had to look for a way to balance both of them, which was like very, very difficult. But I was able to do that till I graduated. I didn't exactly get full support from my parents. My mom always supports everything I do, actually. <laughs> but my dad, my dad, my dad is a, they are both educationists, right? They work with Lagos State government and um, they're in the education sector also. So my dad was like, oh no, you have to do this properly. You have to do your ICANN. I wanted to explain to him that this is what I actually want to do, but I, I, there's no way I would have done that would have made things worse. So, I mean, I had to prove a point to them that this is actually what I want to do with my life, which was very difficult because you can't prove a point to a Nigerian parents until the, the check start rolling in, right? And that took like a while because anytime I tell them I'm going for an event, they'll be like, okay, stay safe. When I tell my dad, he doesn't even say anything. What he will say is, so when, the, when are you going to do your start your ICANN? You have, you have your results already. Do you, you get me as an education? I was telling that very soon. I'm just trying to tidy up a couple of things. So it wasn't easy. But right now, my dad is actually my biggest fan. He follows me on Twitter. He follows me everywhere. He comments on all my pictures. And it's weird. It's like, <laughs> it's weird. So I get full support from them currently. And I mean, they're my biggest fan. Running the business <laughs> is not easy, actually. Especially when you have to bear so many things alone. So the good thing about this new space is that I have like a partner which is also very experienced. So I don't have to go through all the brainstorming alone. We dialogue about issues and, you know, but trust me, running a business is gangster. In Nigeria, it's gangster. So many odds set against you, the government, customers, you know, every single thing, oolums on the streets. If you can ride through the wave, trust me, you'll be able to control and figure out your balance. In 2019, when I opened the first um, the first bistro, that was in Unilag. It was going pretty great, trust me, for like the first three to four months. You know, after pumping money and everything, business is going well, everybody's smiling, I'm smiling, the staff is are smiling, you know, then something tragic happened. All of a sudden, the school management wants me out of the school for no reason. So then I'm like, I'm, it's not possible. I mean, I literally just opened this place a few months ago, and I know how much I've pumped 
into opening this place. It's actually my life. It's my first major establishment that I'm so proud of. So it was all jokes for, at first. I didn't take it serious till when I started having serious issues. They would lock all the shops around me saying, if I actually don't close down, they won't open every other shop. So I was forced to move out. I was forced to stop business. So I had to stop for like a month. Then I started getting a lot of buzz. Oh, Chef, then what's happening with Purple Bistro? I heard you guys are moving to the island. I heard this. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just crazy how people will like assume so many things. Do you get? So I had to start doing home deliveries. I had to do the I had to do delivery from my apartment, which was very very uncomfortable. Imagine having a proper kitchen and you have to start. It was very crazy for me. So, well. That was happening at the same time I was trying to like get a space because I think I was able to save money to get a space, right? Then another thing happened again in June 20, 2019 June. Yeah, 2019 June. Um, after my daily delivery, whatever stuff, so I was somewhere and I, I don't know what happened. I got robbed and I got shot. My two hands gone. I I was I fell into depression because it was like I, I lost everything I had in like space of three months, which was very crazy for me because it was very crazy. I can't even explain how crazy it was then because I was going through a lot. The pain I had to go through, they had to take out the bullets, I could not use my hands. I literally thought I wouldn't be able to use my hands anymore. And it was crazy because this is the hand I used to make money. I used this hand to put food, smile on people's faces, my food. So it was like really crazy. My life was on hold for three months. June, July, August, I did not leave my house. I was indoor all through. Everything was, I lost my phone, I stole my car, I lost the restaurants in Unilag. Like the, the story is just like really crazy and I, I felt alone. My mom was with me for like a month, but she, she, had, she had to go back to work. I was depressed, I was fighting PTSD, I couldn't go out. Once it's dark, I can't stay out. I feel like somebody's after my life. You know, it was like extremely very, very depressing, but I thought to myself that, do I want to allow this break me for life or I actually want to move ahead? So I had to like make a decision for myself. Then I started looking for a new space. Don't forget that I've not moved my stuff out of Unilag. Second week of August, I got a call. I don't even know how they reached out to me because they had stolen my phone and everything. I was not even ginger to retrieve my number because there's nobody. I'm not, I don't, I don't want to actually talk to anybody anymore because I was psychologically not okay. So they reached out to me, you know, like they were telling me that I have to move out my stuff within a week. If not, they will get police to move it out of or just drop it somewhere. And I'm like, people should tell the person in charge that I was shot. I was attacked by armed robbers. The person, she said she does not care that I have to move out my stuff. And people are actually very, very, very cruel. I had to look for how to get a space. I had to, I was, even with my bandage and everything in my hand, I was going, to different places, trying to check for space. I did not have the money. I did not have any money. All the money I had, I spent it on recovering. Because the truth is, no matter how much you have, you would actually pay any amount to feel better and great again. That's if you don't want to lose your life. So my, me recovering was priority for me. And I don't even know when everything I had in my account got drained, like totally drained. I literally did not have any money anymore. It was crazy. But fingers crossed, 
I was looking for space. I did not. I could not find it anywhere. Then I don't know how God brought me or ordered my steps here. I found this place. I spoke to the owner. I told her my story. I was able to get sympathy from her, which was great. So then I thought to myself, what's the next step? What do I do now? I wasn't ready to collect any, any loan. I mean, I would have, but I'm not even strong. I'm not OK to collect loan and speed up things. Then I reached out to my partner. I spoke to him, oh, this is the plan, this is the plan. And it wasn't very difficult to convince him to come on board. And we were able to bring this back to life. Purple Bistro opened 2020 March also. I don't know, everything just happened in March, so. It opened 2020 March, and it opened a week before lockdown. Imagine so much excitement. Oh, we're opening Purple Bistro, it's gonna be mad. Everybody was anticipating and everything. We opened the first week. Oh, it was crazy. People came through, you know, everything was going well. Then the government announced that everybody needs to close down and go into quarantine. I'm like, what? Ow! We've never made any money yet. How are we supposed to do that? I thought of it. We've spent a whole lot of millions here. Do I want to close down the place? I mean, we also have staff that are like also looking up to getting daily bread from here. Do you understand? So then we have to improvise. We had to start deliveries. And for, I think COVID lasted for about, I think we are still in, COVID is actually still, but they eased the lockdown, I think, was it October? So March, April, May, June, July, six months, we were surviving on deliveries. And that was like very, very hard as a business owner or partner or whatever it was very hard because the idea is to you know run the business two three months you are getting your returns but it was difficult for us because it felt like we were just literally paying staff and there was nothing for us but that's one sacrifice you have to make as a leader so it was very crazy but the business was able to survive The great thing about being a chef is me putting a smile on people's face with my food. So let me explain something to you. I cook soul food. Imagine a lady walking into this place feeling depressed or sad. I can serve her a meal that would get her mind off whatever she's feeling and she's focusing on that food and she's enjoying it and I'm still leaving a registered taste afterwards so my food is like a therapeutic session I guess <laughs> so that's like a major win for me that's like my best part of cooking that you have to like forget whatever you that's bothering you and you, you are enjoying the food that moment and even after Maybe like a day, you're still thinking about it and still get your mind off whatever you are thinking. At least for like a few minutes or seconds, you are thinking about that particular meal and you want to come back for it again. So I feel like food is therapeutic. Food is life, right? So that is basically my idea of enjoying myself as a chef. What I would say to whoever is out there grinding is trust the process. Don't skip any process. Go through the basics. Trust me, you're going to get there one day. It might be very rocky right now, but trust the process. Consistency is key. 
we all have a story to tell. For every successful business owner out there, trust me, they've gone through one major thing or the other. They might not tell you, but trust me, there's always a story behind it. I hope I've, I've been able to inspire you, <laughs> right? Um, but trust the process and wait upon the Lord and be of good courage.